Hey everybody, I hope you're all doing well. Um, I'm actually really excited to be telling you about engineering and as well as a brand new program. This has been, it has been a long time since uh, NUS Engineering has upgraded its curriculum. And so today we will tell you about it. And you know, I want to thank uh, everybody who basically prepared uh, this, uh, this uh, e-open open house. Uh, it's been a lot of work and I hope you enjoy the program. Okay, so if you love technology, I think you should challenge yourself with our new engineering program. Now, you know, telling you about NUS engineering would probably require a much longer time. I think I can only give you something in a nutshell. So here's uh, what we do. So if you're wondering, so we build uh, structures uh, from nanoscale to mega scale. So our researchers uh, basically look into everything from the very small, uh, you know, the molecular, the atomic level, all the way to cityscapes, you know. So, and basically we have a program that extends from material science to civil engineering. Now for students, uh, you build cool tech, uh, technology that basically at the forefront of uh, science and technology, right? So here are examples that I'm giving, uh, Project Bumblebee, which is our maritime, marine time um, robot and submersible, as well as, you know, think, take things into space, for instance, uh, that's our nano satellite program with the star center. So you, you, will, you basically play and work with, uh, work with advanced technologies. Now, NUS engineering has a long history. Uh, you know, I guess relative to all the other uh, many engineering schools that are already in Singapore, and we have actually established ourselves much earlier before that, as you know. So back in the 60s, our uh, faculty of engineering is formed under the University of Singapore, and we have our three pillars of engineering, civil, electrical, and mechanical. And then in the 70s, we moved to Cambridge, where we are here today, okay? And we have added new departments. And in the 2000s, because in view of the you know, advances in uh, new areas of engineering, we have added new departments, bioengineering and chemical engineering as uh, examples, okay? And material science. Now today, we're gonna to tell you about our new upgrade, and that's to our curriculum. That's gonna happen in August, 2021. That's you guys will be the inaugural batch that will experience this new program. So I'm really excited, and I hope that you will find how you will find out how it would enhance your uh, academic uh, experience here. Now, with that said, so we'll build behind this new uh, new program a rigor and quality uh, and track record of excellent education that's been recognized by our engineering grad generations of which. Now let's talk a little bit about top university and top engineering, okay? NUS currently is the top university in Asia. So we are consistently ranked on the very, very top. And our engineering program is also ranked worldwide. And you know, currently, you know, depending on which ranking system you look at, we're typically in the top 20. Uh, and that's ahead of many, many universities are out in the US, and in the UK as well. Now, with being a top university, you come, it comes with benefits. And one of the main benefits is that we, we have basically a strong uh, staff uh, of professors that are actually very top in their field. Here are some examples that I'm, I'm giving you. For instance, Professor Dean Ho, head of our biomedical engineering. He works on AI in medicine, uh, Ben T, uh, basically works on soft robotics. In fact, you, go, you might be hearing from him uh, on material science department. Hui Ling, which is also a biomedical uh, engineering professor. She's an expert in biosensors and she has been working on Alzheimer's as COVID test kit. And then we have our very own Nobel laureate uh, in physics. Uh, he started off as a physicist, but he's now joined us as an engineer. Um, so he's he basically uh, got Nobel Prize for the discovery of graphene, and he currently works on smart materials research at, uh, in our faculty. So you're gonna get access to more than 300 uh, talented professors and dedicated teaching staff that hopefully would inspire you and work with you to get the best out of your education here. 
Now, not to mention that our, our departments are top ranked. If you look across, we have 10 departmental programs and you're gonna hear about them from my colleagues soon. They are consistently ranked top 20 in the world. So if you come here and pick any of the discipline, you're guaranteed an excellent education. Uh, you know, basically unrivaled by many of the uh, schools uh, in Asia. Now, what's important ultimately for an engineering education and for you guys as our graduate is that we need to make sure that you are marketable because ultimately the measure of our success is how successful you are when you leave the gates of the school and go out there and get a job, right? So if you look at statistics, our employment statistics is very, very good. And this is pre-COVID. Unfortunately, COVID makes a dent in it, uh, but pre-COVID wise, we consistently across all departments have 90% employment rate. That means that most students out of our 1,400 cohort that, that leaves uh, and graduate, they, about 90% of which will be receiving offers for jobs out there. Now, what's interesting is if you look at how our graduates and where they go, they go into a diverse um, areas of, of, of the job market. So you have the obviously the, the traditional engineering based companies that hire them in manufacturing, in electronics, in construction, but also a bigger chunk in IT and software engineering. So we're competing with computer science at this very moment. Now also a big chunk goes into public uh, service as well as defense, uh, research R&D, technology R&D. So you can see that our graduates are marketable across diverse job, se job sectors. And uh, because of this, uh, that basically promised to basically look, relook at how we're gonna offer our curriculum to enable you to be marketable so that you can be multidisciplinary and get pre prepared for the job market out there when you graduate. So this brings me to the next part, right? Which is our upgrade. So what I call the engineering curriculum 2.0. And this upgrade is really a, the major step that for a long time that we have done in terms of improving, uh, improving our curriculum, this is the first time we're doing a major upgrade. And this will come online this semester, uh, which is in August. So let me explain a little bit of how this works. Okay, so you have four years to effectively finish your degree and you have 40 modules to take, okay? And it starts off with the general education module, which is about five of them you have to do. And this is university-wide, so no choice, but it makes you a well-rounded uh, graduate. Now out of, and then on top of these five, you have to do 27 modules. And this is, these are the modules that would define your engineering discipline. So you, you choose whether it be civil, computing, uh, computer engineering or electrical, right? And then you have eight free electives to develop your other academic interests. Now, and then you're done. You graduate with 40, 40 modules. So this is version 1.0. Now, our new curriculum structure will be different. We expanded our common core to 15. And this will have new programs added. Effectively, what we believe to be very, very important aspects uh, that will make you marketable. So AI and machine learning, design thinking, systems thinking, maker space, sustainable futures and project management and many more, okay? And then on top of that, we have streamlined the major requirement. So this basically allows us to, you see in a, a moment, to allow us to add, do modular add-ons to follow and let you define what you want for your program, deep versus broad. And then finally, we have expanded the unrestricted elective space and we made it multiple use. And, and this expanded space allows you to be flexible. Let me explain a little bit. So first you can use this to specialize further, so go deeper while still making room for your electives. You can pick up a minor on top of a specialization so that gives you some depth as well as um, experience outside of engineering potentially, so that you can be multidisciplinary. And the most, the, the, the one thing that is the most, uh, the most exciting is that now you can also 
do a second major. Now this second major can be within the walls of engineering. So you do a double major in two different topics of engineering as well as a major outside of engineering. So, and you can, all, you can still do that all in four years. So still graduate in time. So we made it easier for those of you whom, who are motivated to explore, to go beyond engineering as well as be multidisciplinary. That's what we essentially did. Now, what does that mean for your career? Well, the classical pathways are still available. So you can still be a, you know, a, purit, a purist, you know, in civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and head towards professional degrees. But on top of that, we have now created new pathways that, that basically uh, travels through other faculties across the entire campus. And these new pathways allow us to tap into programs across NUS, adding to about 50 plus uh, minor specializations and leading to 35 plus second major options. And that gives us ability to give you an engineering enhanced career, a renewed job possibility out there. Now, this is endorsed by our leading employers and industry leaders. So these are some of them who have actually worked with us to design this curriculum, right? These are actually notables in the industry and they are potential employers of our students. And they all basically give us great testimony that this is what we are looking for in, in terms of a new education for engineers to come, okay? Now, obviously we never want you to be a single dimensional uh, student. We want you to explore beyond uh, pure academic life, right? So here comes student life. Now, we always believe that you should work hard, play hard and live well. And we work closely with the engine club to basically put up activities that, lead, that range from obviously uh, engine day, special award, career fair, town hall, and rag and flag days. Okay, I know that COVID has put a dent in that too, and we're currently figuring out how to bring back some of that activities to you so that you feel connected to the faculty and to the rest of the student body. There's campus life on and off, right? So you can choose to stay on campus at U-Town, which is a wonderful place. And, and I'm here plugging uh, RC4, our residential college four. And that's where they really, we have a lot of engineering students staying there. And we have also brought TechnoEdge, our new cafeteria and, and student activities area. And we continue to expand that. That just came online this year. Now, on top of that, you're gonna get access to all the amenities whether it be nature, parks, and you know, uh, social places all around here. Because NUS and NUS engineering is basically situated centrally with, with very good transport. Now, let me say a few words about our alumni, those who walk before you and who are making a difference in the world. So there are a lot of alumni that continue to connect back because we created such a strong community um, and for instance, Grace here, basically the CEO and founder of BX. Remember I told you about Bumblebee? She's one of those who graduated working on the Bumblebee project, okay? Now you might be wondering, uh, there's a nice picture of her and Ingrid. Right here, that's the Bumblebee days. You might be wondering, they are, they are a couple. Uh, they got married. So they not only found, found a BX, they found each other. I think that's really cool. And the I also have major alumnus that has moved on and created a fantastic career. And here we, we highlight the latest, uh, Hung Ping, which is our alumnus for, you know, uh, industry and systems. Basically, you know, he's CEO of FairPrice of supply chain business, as well as former CEO of LTA. And, and, and uh, Se Xiang. Se Xiang, basically, she's, she actually is the head of Internet of Things in Northern Europe. What a phone she got, the Young Alumni Award this year. And like she said, you know, she, she had benefited from a multidisciplinary education. Now, here are others who are on their way to great success. Uh, Raghav basically says that, you know, the multidisciplinary hands-on experience is very useful. And he basically chose the path of engineering science. And we have uh, Carmen, who basically one of our GEP scholars, who gone on to do graduate school and finally became a medical doctor, a medical officer with Tan Tock Seng Hospital. Right, and so just to end it all and a message to you. So join us for great education. 
challenge yourself with a top engineering program and start your learning and career journey with us. You, I, I, I bet you that you'll be worthwhile. Thank you.